Hey everybody, uh, today I want to talk about sorcerers. The Magicka Sorcerer has been my main character for the past couple years. It's also the one I got most of my achievements on and uh, I'm, I've got different setups here for four-man content, for solo content and for trials. And I'm gonna try and show all of them to you to propose uh, what I figure is best for certain types of content. Let's click the buff up here. All right, um, let's go straight into the character sheet. We've got 35k max Magicka, which is a big pool, very good. And then over 18k max health, almost 19k to help us stay alive easier. We've got max stamina 10k for roll dodging and sprinting. And then our Magicka recovery is at 869. But since this is the four men and solo content version of the build, it's not too bad, the Magicka recovery, because we will heavy attack if we need resources back. Our spell damage is about 3k, just short of it. And then we've got almost 70% uh, spell critical. The resistances right now are 13k and 9k. However, if you put Boundless Storm on, we will attack the target dummy next to us. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, the spell resistance goes up uh, to 18k and the physical to almost 15k. So this is very nice then. 64 points into Magicka. For food, we're running the Purifying Bloody Mara. That is the uh, new version of the old normal Bloody Mara. So not the one that used to be the disastrous one, but just the um, normal Bloody Mara. Let me quickly show you the difference in that. So this used to be the normal Bloody Mara, the Purifying one, and the Corrupting one used to be the disastrous Bloody Mara. The Corrupting one will actually set you to Vampire Stage 4, it will give you max health magicka and health recovery. However, we do not really want to go to vampire stage 4 because the skill costs of all our other skills that are not vampire skills is going to be way too high. So we definitely always want to be at stage 1 and therefore we are using the uh, purifying bloody mara that will always set our stage to stage 1 and grant us max magicka and health. If you do not have this, you can also uh, just use random flat blue max health max magic of food and just make sure that you're uh, at stage one anyway and then obviously for potions we're using the essences of spell power they grant major sorcery increasing spell damage major prophecy increasing spell critical and major um, intellect increasing the magicka recovery plus they also restore over 7k magicka immediately this you can craft those or you can buy them from guild traders or since Greymore, you can also um just go to Cyrodiil and uh, buy them from the vendors there they'll be called something like alliance spell power draught something like that and they will give exactly the same three bonuses so you can buy them there for alliance points if you got a whole bunch of alliance points stacked up but you don't have the mats or the money to buy those or craft those Okay, let's uh, look back into the character sheet then. We're using the Shadow Mundestone for increased critical damage since our crit chance is almost 70%, so we're gonna crit a lot, and if we do, the damage will be higher. And as I said before, we're always Vampire Stage 1, which will reduce our health recovery by 10%, and uh, will make our regu regular abilities cost 3% more, whereas our Vampire abilities cost 6% less. We're not actually using any Vampire abilities on this version of the build for the four man and solo content however you can still easily be a vampire because the three percent ability cost is very easily cancelled out by just heavy attacking a little bit to get your magicka back and by having a certain skill on our front bar which will increase our magicka recovery so you can easily be a stage one vampire still on a magicka sorcerer for four man and solo content and also for trials for trials it's even good because we're going to use the spammable then to prove my point with this build, because you might say maybe this guy is just telling me a whole bunch of bullshit, here's the list of my achievements. We got Black Rose Executioner, Hercene's Champion, Huntmaster, Alpha Predator, Silver Knight. Uh, what else is good? I don't know. Well, you can see it's quite a long list. And I've done all this with this setup that I'm showing you right now. So it's definitely possible. Flawless Conqueror is here for Maelstrom Arena. Dragon Star Arena Champion. Even got the 
guardian of the green somewhere in here yeah there that is uh layer much luck hard mode no death uh speed run so i hope this sort of proves my point let's get right into the skills then this build is for three tps and one tank situations you do not need a healer with this build uh running because you can actually throw some heals in and uh, give some buffs that the healer would give anyway first thing we've got is crushing shock this is our spammable comes from the destruction stop skill line starts out as force shock and uh, what this does is it gives flame damage frost damage and shock damage costs only 1900 magicka about but the more important thing is it can interrupt enemies so if enemies are casting or channeling abilities like the archers in Maelstrom Arena or Selene in Lair of Marcelok or um, the uh, fire guys in Helra. so there's pretty much in every content almost there's something that needs to be interrupted and that's gonna be your job because you can do it from range uh, so this is a spammable it also interrupts enemies which makes it very easy because it's just randomly in your rotation so you're gonna interrupt anyway and then enemies uh, hit while casting interrupted set off balance stunned for three seconds so the off balance is very nice for damage as well it just looks like this you're just casting the shock on it and if the target was actually channeling an ability it would be interrupted doing so the next thing we've got from the daedric summoning skill line is hardened ward this is very important starts out as conjured ward it's our shield and this will uh, grant us a over 10k damage shield for six seconds so pretty simple just looks like this and I think it even works for your pets as well let me summon the tormentor for a second there and cast the shield the tormentor oftentimes gets a shield too it's a little bit underneath him there but you can see it brings us to our next skill the twilight tormentor the morph is up to you the tormentor is just randomly up fighting by your side dealing shock damage and um, if you activate the tormentor special ability you will cause it to deal 53 percent more damage to enemies above 50 percent health so the special ability actually activating this skill is only worth it while the boss or enemy is still above 50 percent health if they fall below that it won't do anything so you don't need to do that anymore then um so this is the dps version of that thing you can also morph it to the twilight matriarch if you want to be safe and then the second bit with activating it and dealing more damage to enemies above 50% uh, health will fall away. However, therefore, you will get a heal, and it's one of the strongest burst heals in the game. Uh, so whenever you activate the ability with the Matriarch, you will get a really strong heal for you and up to two other people. So if you're running in a one tank, three DPS composition, and you need a lot of heals because there's a lot of damage coming in, you might want to morph this to the Matriarch then. It's the safer choice. This is a little bit more damage. I don't really have problems uh, running the Tormentor in all kinds of content, but having a heal there for other people or people that might not be too experienced is always a nice choice. So if you want to go the safe route, you want to choose the Matriarch. If you want to go the full damage route, you want to do the Tormentor. Next up is Daedric Prey. This is a damage over time sort of ability. It only lasts for six seconds. Um, but, well, it doesn't do damage over time, but it lasts for 6 seconds and it deals 9k magic damage to the target and then five, uh, almost 5k magic damage to enemies nearby. Uh, the most important thing, though, while we're running this, like the reason we're running this is because while the curse is active, your pet deals an additional 20% damage to the target. And this should count not only for the Twilight Tormentor, but also for the Greater Storm Metronach, your ultimate is actually 20% stronger if you keep the curse up and if you have a pet helmet I'm gonna tell you right like we're running the Maw of the Infernal obviously because it's the strongest thing at the moment uh, that's also a pet so that would also do 20% more damage so you can not only boost your Tormentor which is up all the time anyway you can also boost your ultimate and your monster set with it very nice uh, just looks like this curse is up pets gonna attack and pets all pets gonna be 20% stronger and then the curse will explode after a certain amount of time six seconds to be exact and deal magic damage 
and it will also deal and damage to everybody in the area too okay next up is elemental drain why do we run this because we do not have a healer we are a magic a dps and um minor magic steel helps us get resources back because for 23 seconds if you do damage to the target that is afflicted with elemental drain you restore 300 magicka every one second while damaging them which you should be doing and then also if the tank is not running pierce armor but ransack you'll be missing out on the major breach reducing uh, the target's spell resistance by 5k which is very important so if your tank has the ransack morph or just taunts it from range within a rage uh, the target will not be afflicted with major breach reducing their spell resistance um, at all so you're the one in charge of keeping this up just looks like this and then you can see the two buffs up there one of them is the major breach and the other one is the magic steel so now when I attack it I get magicka back plus my attacks obviously do more damage since the spell resistances of the target are lowered so you always want to keep this up on everything in maelstrom in dungeons in black rose whatever you get if there's a target with high health that needs to be taken down fast you always want to keep it up and the next thing is for group protection this is reviving barrier from the pvp skill line support you get this at rank six so you need to play a little bit of pvp with it and what it does is it casts a ward sort of a damage shield for everyone in your group including you for 30 seconds so it lasts quite long and it absorbs up to 31k damage which is quite a lot and then the ward also heals you and your group members for 15k almost over 15 seconds so if there's a lot of incoming damage and you need to protect your group you're going to pull this and the other reason why we're having this on our front bar is because of the passives here which say uh, increases your magicka recovery by 5% and then at next rank 10% for each support ability slotted. So we're losing out on the old vampire passive of having an extra 10% magicka recovery, but since we're running barrier on a front bar, we will be getting an extra 10% magicka recovery anyway. So with barrier on here, uh, the magicka recovery is going to be higher, plus you're going to be able to shield your group and heal them up if a lot of damage is incoming or yourself even in Maelstrom Arena there's some situations where it's quite handy actually now you'll notice that we are not really going on full on damage we can do quite a bit of DPS still fairly like obviously more than enough for stuff like veteran Maelstrom veteran Black Rose or uh, or all the veteran dungeons and hard modes but we are certainly also running a couple utility skills here which is the whole point of the solo slash forming content build you can interrupt things you can shield your group and heal them if there's an oh shit moment you can put major breach on reducing the target spell resistance so your attacks are stronger you put minor magic steel on and you can shield yourself obviously so this is pretty much the the utility portion of the front bar but you're still able to dish out a whole lot of damage now let's go to the back bar Boundless storm this is for our own resistances as soon as this active uh, we will increase our physical and spell resistance by 5k so we have more resistances um, which is very handy especially in solo content and then we also gain major expedition for a brief period for four seconds increasing our movement speed and this is pretty much saving your ass in maelstrom arena a lot you can just activate this and be faster and get out of stupid situations while having more resistances plus when you're standing next to targets you will zap them since you're living lightning and deal damage too it plays very well together with the next skill we're using boundless storm is from the um storm calling skill line by the way so the second thing you can unlock starts out as lightning form with the boundless storm and then the next thing we've got is also from that skill line it starts out as surge morph, move it, morph it to uh, critical surge and that will grant you major brutality sorcery increasing weapon and spell damage which we already get from the potions but it's nice to have there anyway and uh, while active dealing critical damage heals you for over 3k health every one second so this is super strong especially in combination with boundless storm if you keep both of them up everything that gets close to you basically gets zapped and you have a chance to crit with these zaps 
and then you just heal for 3k health. So it's very hard to kill you if you always keep both of these running. Next thing we've got is the Tormentor again. Obviously, we need to double bar it so it always stays up and it doesn't just disappear if we bar swap. Next up is Mystic Orb. This uh, comes from the Undaunted skill line. takes quite a while to level up, but it's really worth it. It's one of the best skills in the game right now, if you ask me. It starts out as Necrotic Morph, Morph to Mystic Morph, and what it does is it creates a globe that is flowing around the room and like in one direction, obviously and uh, it deals magic damage over 1k every half second plus allies can activate the combustion synergy which uh, makes the orb explode for them for 8k magic damage and they restore 4k magic or stamina whichever is higher so not only is this one of the strongest aoe's in the game right now but also will you um, give your allies the chance to take the synergy and restore 4k uh, resources so especially in 4-man content too if people run out of resources like say the poison archer stage in veteran dragon star arena where they can get hit by enemies and have their resources all drained from them or generally in all kinds of content if people run out of resources it's very nice because you just throw them an orb it floats around the room it deals damage to everything it floats by and people can just activate a synergy and restore resources plus if they're running a set like locesti still for the um major slayer they need synergies anyway to uh, activate that set for them okay and then the last thing that's not our ultimate is unstable wall of storms obviously this comes from the destruction stuff skill line this deals magic damage in front of you to um, no actually not deal shock damage because we're using a lightning stuff so it's called unstable wall of storms here Slam your stuff down and you create a barrier in front of you dealing shock damage every one second and it can set the uh, concussed enemies off balance which will cause them to take more damage. So this is pretty much why we're, run why we're running this in the back bar, especially for 4 minute solo content. We want to provide a lot of off balance um, to get more damage out of this. And then uh, the barrier itself will explode for almost 7k shock damage as soon as the effect ends. It's pretty simple, it just looks like this. Put this thing down and everything inside of it will take damage. Uh, it can be set uh, concussed off balance, take even more damage, and then it explodes in the end, dealing another 7k damage. So you just always want to keep this down, no matter what. Um, this also plays very well with our back bar weapon, because everything inside of here will take more damage from light and heavy attacks. And then the last thing, obviously, is the Greater Storm Atro. This is probably the strongest Zork ultimate at the moment. Um, you summon a Storm Atronach that deals 8k shock damage and stuns enemies for 3 seconds. And then the Atronach saps the closest enemy, dealing 4k shock damage every 1 second. So it's very good. Plus, allies can also activate the Charged Lightning Synergy, granting the ally and the Atronach Major Berserk, increasing their damage done by 25% for 8 seconds. So that's actually quite important here. If you do the Atronach and you're in a 4-man group, you might want to tell someone to grab that Synergy so that the Atro and them get the Major Berserk, increasing their damage done by 25%. It's quite a big buff. A lot of people don't know this, they just throw the Atro down and probably in a place far away so that it's not in the way. But if someone actually takes the synergy from it, it's a lot stronger and the person gets stronger as well. So let your teammates know whenever you're dropping an Atro. Alright, that's pretty much the front bar. Now let's get into the sets. We are running a Lightning Staff of Mother Sorrow. This is quite easy to obtain. Drops into Shan. You can also buy it from the Guild Traders. Most people will want Inferno Staffs, so the Lightning Staffs are cheaper. And then there's also a uh, quest in Shadowfen, if I'm not wrong, that will just randomly reward you with a Lightning Staff. So we want this in Precise, and we want it with a Shock Enchant Glyph, whereas we want the Maelstrom's Perfected Lightning Staff on the back bar, and infused with a Weapon and Spell Damage Glyph. This is what I said before, uh, it adds spell penetration and your light and heavy attacks deal an additional damage to uh, enemies inside of your wall of elements. So this thing here. Anything inside of it that you now light attack or uh, heavy attack will take more damage from these attacks. <coughs> Mother Sorrow itself, uh, what can I say, it's not one of the more exciting sets, it's actually pretty boring, but it does the job. There's unfortunately 
not many sets that can keep up with the damage it uh, is able to dish out. Adds 1k max magicka and then a lot of spell crit bonuses, 800, 800, another 1800. And uh, you can want the jewelry there as well. For solo or farming content, I'd go with one, maybe even two pieces in infused and one bloodthirsty. Because the spell damage bonus is nice in infused. You want spell damage glyphs on all of these. I've got one infused and two bloodthirsty at the moment. You can also go two infused and one bloodthirsty. It's not really too important, but the infused piece, at least one, does help, I think, in uh, four man or solo content. Okay, the next set we're running is obviously False Gods, Spell Critical, Miner Slayer, uh, reduce, increasing all your damage done to Trial Arena Monsters by 5%, and then an extra Spell Crit bonus, another Spell Damage bonus, and then reducing the cost of all new magic abilities by 8%. This is how we counter out the Vampirism easily, even though we're not using any uh, Vampire skills. And when an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore Magicka and gain Major Expedition. So this is also very good for being able to keep your speed up in dungeons, especially if you're going for the hard modes and no death achievements or in Maelstrom Arena. Uh, it helps you a lot with Magicka sustain with Major Expedition so you can get out of situations and AoEs quicker and with the reduc reduced cost of Magicka abilities but in general. It's, just, it's been one of the strongest uh, Magicka DPS sets for a while now and it still is very good. Optionally, you could also wear Infallible Aether this also gives you spell crit bonuses, uh, spell damage bonuses, and minor slayer. And then you can uh, afflict enemies with minor vulnerability if you do a fully charged heavy attack, increasing their damage d taken by 8%. However, I found that false gods works better for me than infallible ether, because since we're using two lightning staves and we're dealing shock damage, which can already provide minor vulnerability, the... Uh, the five piece bonus from false gods in my opinion is just a lot better for that type of content than doing fully charged heavy attacks and getting a safe minor vulnerability for 10 seconds whereas you can just randomly proc it with your all the lightning damage that you do anyway we've got more of the infernal this is the strongest magicka dps monster helm or one of the strongest at the moment Adds 1k max magicka, and when you da when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack, you have a 33 uh, chance to summon a fire breeding daedroth for 15 seconds, and the daedroth will do flame damage. And it all has all sorts of different attacks: fiery breath, fiery claws, jack claw, which alternate every two seconds. It can have a full uptime because it lasts for 15 seconds, and it can be summoned every 15 seconds. So if you're lucky, you can have this thing up all the time. And it is definitely the the strongest thing at the moment for Magicka DPS that got a really nice buff. I'm actually quite happy about it because people hardly ever played this thing before, but now they do. And it works so well with all our pet stuff as well, with Daedric Curse um, and the whole sorcerer theme overall, because we we do summon a lot of pets. So for solo and farming content, this is definitely the best choice at the moment. However, for trials. It depends on how many people run it and if you want to drive your tank nuts or not. You want the helmet and shoulders in medium and heavy. doesn't matter which one as long as you have one of each. Obviously False Gods is light. And then Mother Sorrow and Bloodthirsty infused the jewelry. Infused back bar lightning stuff with weapon spell damage glyph and uh, precise front bar stuff with shock damage glyph. So much for that. Let's quickly go into the champion points for this setup. 72 in Ironclad, 16 in Spell Shield, 56 in Hardy and Elemental Defender, 51 Thick Skinned, 19 Quick Recovery, 44 Warlord, 75 and 75 in Tenacity and Arcanus, 20 in Shadow Ward, 56 in Tumbling, 61 in Elfborn, 49 in Elemental Expert, 10 in Spell Erosion, and then we want 47 in Staff Expert and 28 in Mastered Arms, because you will be heavy attacking quite a bit, so it's nice to have these points in here. And then 72 in here and 3 into piercing because in the next setup we might be using bark trap. The rotation is fairly simple. Back bar you just want to cast orb, reapply your boundless storm, do the blockade. On the front bar you do a light attack and the daedric curse and then you just heavy attack and crushing shock. 
there's not really too much of a set rotation since this is for solo and four man content and you'll be roll dodging and running around a lot all you want to make sure is that you always keep your AOEs up keep your buffs up bound the storm and crit surge keep your dated curse up so your pets do more damage obviously before the fight starts apply elemental drain and then if everything's running you've got time to just heavy attack the target or throw a crushing shock in for some extra damage or if you need to interrupt something and then as soon as your buffs run out you want to reapply all your AOE dots, buffs, the orb, elemental drain and then just keep on heavy attacking. If you got full magicka you want to do a little bit more damage you can also just light weave a couple crushing shocks in there like this and then go back to reapplying your everything and doing a couple heavy attacks to get some magicka back. So that's all options, all possibilities. As I said before, it's not a trial setup where you just go stand in front of a boss for five minutes doing the same rotation over and over. You gotta run around a lot, you gotta do a lot of things with this setup. And yeah, people have been asking me because I've been streaming a lot on the Sorcerer. I do use various setups, it's not the only setup I ever use. Um, but it's the one that I'm most often using for four men and solo content. Now, the nice thing about the other setup is that we only have to swap around a couple skills and we're pretty much in trials mode. So the ultimate in trials will have a healer, right? So we will go to the mages guild and slot, slot shooting star on the front bar for extra mages guild passives. We will obviously not use Elemental Drain because there will be a healer providing that, so we will use the Execute ability, Endless Fury. And we will obviously not be Crushing Shock because we might, well, we might actually use Crushing Shock depending on the trials in, in Veteran Maw of Lakage, for example. With the Twins boss fight when you have to interrupt things, it can be very nice. Or in Hell Ra. But for most uh, situations, we are going to use Blood for Blood, which is the new Vampire Spamble. So this is what the front bar changes to. And the back bar stays exactly the same, except for that we are going to use Barb Trap instead of Boundless Storm here. Because we'll have a healer, we'll be kept self, uh, safe. We can still use Crit Surge, actually. Because we will need this to cancel out the blood for blood cost this actually costs 2k health it's a very very strong spammable but we want to obviously not die we don't want to spam this 10 times <laughs> and then just be dead we need crit surge still to heal ourselves back up instead of barb trap you could also uh, use from the psychic skill line channel acceleration this will also give you minor force for 36 seconds but it has a channel time this will also give you minor force as long as it's down and it will deal a little bit of extra physical damage which is why we had the three points into piercing in the champion points for trials obviously the red cp depend on which trial you're doing and if you're running this setup i would definitely put points out of staff expert and into master at arms so you can either put all 47 into here though that might be a little bit overkill so I'd have to check out how much exactly. Let me quickly try out because you want to have full percentages here in case you didn't know that. But you could go with like 10% staff expert and then see if that works out with master at arms to get to a full percent. No, you don't. So let's try to get 20% here and 12% here. So that would be the setup in CP if you're running the actual trial setup. Now, you don't actually have to um, change anything in your gear. It will all still be exactly the same for Veteran Trials setup, except for that you could run Flame Staffs because they do some more damage, and Off Balance will most likely be covered by the tanks and healers anyway. So if I'm in Trial situation, I'll go from the Lightning Staff of Mother Sorrow in Precise with Shock Damage to the Inferno Staff of Mother Sorrow in Precise with Flame Damage. And I will go from the Perfected Lightning Staff to the Perfected Flame Staff with exactly the same uh, enchantments and traits. 
So that is the only thing you'll have to change for an actual very, very high DPS uh, trial setup. You'll still be running more of the Infernal, you'll still be running False Gods, and you'll still be running the Jewelry with one Infused and two Bloodthirsty or three Bloodthirsty in trial situation. All right, for this rotation, it's going to be pretty much the same actually. Orb, Trap, Blockade. Obviously, before the fight, you want to keep your crit surge up. Because now on your front bar, you're going to light attack, do the curse, and then light attack and spam blood for blood. And you'll see blood for blood costs health, but you'll also see the green numbers next to the Daedrus there. I'm healing myself with crit surge. And then if the target is above 50%, you can activate the bird and bar swap. So, there's a lot of pets here. I hope it's somewhat visible. I'll try and go over here. Again... Orb, Light Attack, Trap, Light Attack, Blockade, Bar Swap, Light Attack, Curse, Light Attack, Spammables. Obviously not as many as I just did right now. And then if the target is above 50%, you can Light Attack to the Bird and Bar Swap. You want to keep your Crit Surge up at all times. And then you just r rinse and repeat. Orb, Trap, Blockade... Curse, spammables. Depends on how many you can get in here. I'd say like start with five and then try to get some more. Orb, trap, blockade, curse, spammables, bird, orb, trap, blockade, curse, spammables. And as you can see, Blood for Blood actually costs health, so our Magicka doesn't even go down. We have no resource problems whatsoever. And if you keep Crit Surge up, we're not even dying because we're gonna crit and heal ourselves back up. So this is just how you go. Orb Trap Blockade, Light Attack, Curse, you're spammable. You can see me losing health, but you can see all these green numbers, which means I'm healing myself with Crit Surge and the bird and then that's just the rotation for this so this is how I usually run my Sork this is my two main setups at the moment for Greymore I really hope you enjoyed this video um, just get these sets they're pretty much good for all kinds of content and uh, the skills I really like that it's so easy to swap out you just put uh, elemental drain here the barrier here and uh, destructive no what's it called crushing shock here and then just bound the storm here and you're pretty much set for for veteran maelstrom arena or you just swap out these couple of skills here and you're pretty much a really high dps machine for veteran uh, dlc trials even and stuff all right so much for the sorcerer guide i hope you enjoy this obviously there are a lot of other great builds out there and a lot of other great choices out there uh you can play whatever you want to play but i found this to be the easiest thing you can do to um to just go from solo content forming content to to trial content and um well yeah and actually be able to just get all of your achievements get all of your titles here so good luck with that i hope you enjoy playing magic sorcerer it's really strong this patch especially with the new vampire spinnable have fun enjoy i'll see you next time